Hello there. Welcome to the practice video on percent error. Um, super quick percent error is just a way to, for you to figure out how far off you are from accepted values. And we are going to do that using an equation where we do the measured value, which is going to be determined by the student or the scientist in a lab. We are going to uh, subtract the accepted value, which is what you'll find on reference tables in the Merck index, etc. We're going to divide by the accepted value, and then we will multiply that by 100 to convert into a percent. Our results are considered valid if, they, uh, if the percent error in total comes out to be less than 5%. That's typically what we're going to use as a measurement of how effective our um, measurements are in a lab. If we are beyond 10%, it means that there is some type of user error that's pretty significant. A lot of the time it's going to come down to faulty equipment, but that's the idea of the percent error equation. It'll tell you how far off you are, and then you can potentially backtrack and figure out sort of what went wrong. Now, when things do go wrong in the lab, a lot of the time, all you have to do is write it very well and detailed in your conclusion paragraph. It's kind of rare in the learning process to have to go back and redo an experiment because it's so wrong. Um, it does happen though, so <laughs> don't be surprised. Um, but I, I just have my students write in the conclusion what went wrong because identifying the problem is a good piece of the learning process. So right now we're going to go through three problems. Um, I suggest that you pause the video and try them yourself and then watch me walk through them so that you can kind of see how it goes. Um, all right, let's get started. This first question says, in a lab activity, the density of a sample of vanadium is determined to be 6.7 grams per cubic centimeter at room temperature. The Merck index, the accepted value, reports 6 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the percent error? Okay, I am going to kind of sketch this out, write it. This is what I like to do. The measured value in this case is 6.7 grams per cubic centimeter. I know this because it says in a lab activity, the density is determined. That means whatever comes next is the measured value. So that's 6.7 grams per cubic centimeter. And the accepted value is what's going to be reported in the Merck index. And that is saying 6.0 grams per cubic centimeter. So that is what all of our collection of scientific data tells us. So I'm going to pop this into the equation to figure out kind of like how far off we are. Measured minus accepted over accepted. Um, sometimes you'll see measured as the experimental value and uh, the accepted as the actual value. Those mean the same thing. Um, so the experimental value could be the 6.7. It kind of just depends on who taught you and what books you're reading, which version you see. I think measured and accepted is more common though. Okay, so measured value here is 6.7%, or rather 6.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, the accepted value is 6 grams per cubic centimeter. I don't like to put units when I do the math. Um, that's why I like to write my equations and then go and plug in the number, just the numbers. Um, it's not always the case. It's not always that simple, but when I can, I like to. Just helps me do the math a little bit better when there's less clutter. Okay, so up top, we are going to get 0.7. Divide that by the 6, and I am getting 0.11... 67. Um, so I will multiply that by 100 to convert it into a percent. And that is going to give me 11.67%. It's really just six repeating, but we don't do repeatings in chemistry. Unfortunately, this data is only reported to two significant figures. So my final answer should also have two significant figures, which is kind of stinky. Um, and that is going to put me at 12%. Either way, this data is not valid because it is greater than a 5% error, which means that something is very wrong here. Um, likely the volume of this sample of vanadium was done incorrectly. The mass on a scale, a regular balance, is going to be kind of hard to mess up. Um, those balances are pretty reliable. It's probably the volume measurement. Um, so that's probably what I would write in my conclusion paragraph when I got a 12% error. Ouch. Okay, let's move on. 
All right, in the second question, a student uses a triple beam balance and determines the mass of a metal sample to be 2.65 grams, but the actual mass is 2.82 grams. What is the student's percent error? Blah. Okay, uh, I just say that because triple beam balances are terrible. Um, okay, so the measured value is 2.65 grams. They're so easy to like get out of whack and be miscalibrated. And I can just see this being a problem. Okay, so that's our measured and accepted. I am going to write out my equation measured minus accepted over the accepted value times 100. And that just converts it to the percent. Um, okay, so now something interesting is happening here. The measured value is 2.65, but the accepted value is 2.82. So this looks like you should get a negative value. We're going to divide that by the 2.82. The negative value here is really just telling you that whatever the accepted value is came under, I'm sorry, whatever the measured value is came under the accepted value. So it's less than the accepted value. Positives and negatives in chemistry are really just not that simple. <laughs> They're not the same as positives and negatives that you see in the real world. Um, so in the case of percent error, a negative percent error means that your answer is lower than accepted. And a positive percent error means that your value is higher than accepted. Um, in heat flow, positive means that it's endothermic. Negative means it's exothermic. Um, it's, you know, positive in chemistry is losing electrons. Positive and negative in chemistry is not surface level. So in this case, just remember that negative is not really a thing. It tells you something. It's not a negative number. It's telling you information about the number. Um, so we're just going to turn this into a positive because we already know that the accepted value is higher than the measured. The measured came in lower. So uh, some people will like to do this as absolute values also just to remind them um, that Percent error should always be a positive value. You can do it that way if you like. On top, I'm getting 0.17, and I'm going to divide that by the 2.82. And then I will multiply that by 100 to turn it into a percent. Let's add that. Um, so my final answer is coming out to 6.03%, which is just invalid. <laughs> That stinks. I'm telling you, it's definitely this triple beam balance. Those things very easily get out of whack and they're wonky. Um, they can handle quite a bit of wear and tear, but a digital balance is going to be cheaper at this point and certainly more accurate. So um, not a fan of the triple beam balance. Final question here is a little bit tougher because we're not getting an exact value for the measured value. Uh, it says a student measures the mass and volume of a piece of aluminum. The measurement for the mass, I know this is mass because my unit is grams. The mass is 25.6 grams. And the volume is 9.1 cubic centimeters. And again, I know this is volume because the unit is cubic centimeters. That is a unit for volume. So it says the student calculates the density of aluminum. Boop. Okay, let's do that. Density, we know, is the amount of stuff you have in a certain amount of space. Mass divided by volume. So I'm going to pop that in real quick. 25.6 divided by the 9.1 is giving me a uh, density. You know, I'll write it. That is giving me a final density of 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Notice here it's grams divided by cubic centimeters. That's how I got my unit, grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, so that's the, what the student calculated. So we're going to label that D sub student to tell us that this is the density that the student came up with. And it asks, what is the student's percent error based on their calculated density? The accepted value is 2.7. So now I'm going to go pop this into the percent error equation. Measured minus accepted over accepted times 100 to turn it into a percent. I don't know what's with this app right now. <laughs> okay, so the measured value was the 2.8. 
the accepted value is 2.7. Divide by the accepted value of 2.7, and then we will multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent. So 0.1 divided by 2.7. The subtraction I can do in my head. <laughs> now we'll multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percent, and the answer I am getting is 3.7 percent. And that is a valid answer because it's less than 5 percent, meaning that whatever this student did, um, it's a little off, but not so off that it invalidates the data. Now, um, my guess, like I mentioned with the triple beam balance, if you're working with a digital balance, it's really hard to mess it up. The digital balances a lot of the time will tell you that they're not stable, but they also have um, kind of like a level that you would use to maybe hang a picture on the wall. They have the, the crosshairs and the bubble and you got to get the, the little air bubble perfectly inside the crosshairs. And that's how you know that the balance is good to go. Uh, if it's a little off, it'll read your data incorrectly. So um, my guess is that this issue with the percent error probably came from the uh, volume calculation because volume, you're going to take this um, piece of aluminum and put it into a graduated cylinder and that's going to be reading by eye and it's definitely going to be tougher than asking the balance to read for you. So um, that's what I would write in the conclusion for this. Not too far off though, pretty good. All right, that was percent error. If you need to see the lesson again, I'll link that video below. Um, that's all, leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video, subscribe so you don't miss the next practice session and I'll see you there, bye.